measure it, they tied one end of a rope to its neck and the other end to a tree. The offending pest turned out to be a 22-foot reticulated python. The cause of death was by asphyxiation around the neck and chest. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. Come on. If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? Into a realm where fact meets fiction. Science meets legend. Where nightmares come to life. <laughs> Do you believe? Lost Tapes, Megaconda. Okay. Okay, you got everything? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Shh, you got everything. Turn it on, turn the camera on. Okay. In the summer of 2008, avid animal rights activists Scott Sumner and Evan Metcalf set out to investigate evidence of illegal animal trading by a local textile merchant. This is Scott Sumner Dude, the reporting blanket. for. Uh, Get the blanket off. Good idea. Yeah, it looks better. Little did they know that the danger they were about to face inside the urban warehouse was far greater than anything they might have encountered in the wild. These are their tapes. Okay, you ready? Yeah. This is Scott Sumner, reporting for Animal Exploitation Response League News. We are standing in front of Tobar Limited, a company that claims to be working with textiles from around the world. However, we found information that shows that they may be involved with illegal exotic animal trade. We believe their owner, Ken Tobar, is using international connections and the internet to sell these products online. Now we at AERL have been trying to contact them repeatedly, but have been ignored. So now myself and my fellow activist, Evan, are gonna be taking matters into our own hands and entering the warehouse to find some sort of evidence to support these illegal activities. And we are gonna shut this place down and get Ken Tobar behind bars. Is it good? Yeah. Okay, how'd it look? Yeah, we look good. Right, what let's... do you mean, take these matters into our own hands? Well, what do you think we're gonna do? We gotta get in there. Wait, we're not going over the, we're not going over the wires. Well, do you got a key, Evan? Because otherwise there's really not an option. Just hold on. Determined to put an end to the atrocities they suspected Mr. Tobar of perpetrating, armed with only a crowbar and a video camera, Scott and Evan decided to take the law into their own hands. Come on. I don't think I can do this. What? Dude, we've been working on this for months. You can't just back out on me now. No, I don't think I can get over the fence. Yeah, you can. Come on, man. This isn't that hard. Come on, put your hands up there. Unbeknownst to Scott and Evan, retired police officer Larry Johnson was patrolling the grounds with his guard dog, Bishop. Get this, get this. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> right there. 
<laughs> Larry suspected that Ken Tobar, the warehouse owner, was involved in black market activities, but knew better than to question his volatile boss. However, inside the warehouse, there was one particular crate that made Larry and Bishop increasingly uneasy. Come on, you in this crazy box, boy. What is all this stuff? Honestly, I have no idea. Looks like it's a bust. Oh, come on, man. I know it's around here somewhere. What are they doing? Whoa, what's that? Those are heat lamps. Bingo. They're definitely not from the United States. <laughs> it's in there. Hey. Oh, oh, God. God. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Okay, we got it. You got it all on film, right? Yeah. Hey, let's do a segment. Let's get out of here. Okay. Ready? Go. We've definitely confirmed that Tobar Limited is involved in far more than textiles. We're finding exotic lizards, snakes, live animal imports. <laughs> Frankly, we found a lot more evidence than we ever expected to find here. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Put the Sir, camera down. How many? Oh.